Hey YouTube, welcome to another Green Dragons Gaming Club Battle Report. Without us, they never feel like winners, and without them, we couldn't look so good. This is another Pretty Boy Bat Rep, and this is Corner Hammer Round 3. Uh, for those of you who have not watched the first two, um, I had a, a smallish loss round 1, and then I had a smallish win round 2 to pull me back, so now this is round 3. I'm in the middle of the pack, and I need to do all these next three games to really boost myself up. Uh, this is my list. Uh, feel free to pause it, take a look over. And here is the table. Now, I think I this might be turn one after movement already, because um, I forgot to take pictures of deployment, but I'll go over real quick. I'm playing uh, Todd McGee in this round, and he has a very interesting mixed demons army. Uh, it's a true poly list, and he's got four harbingers. Uh, so he's got four different wizards. Um, I think he's got one harbinger of change, um, which is there in the igniters behind the hedge. And then on the left-hand side, he's got a unit of plaguelings. Uh, behind the hill, he has a unit of pestilent beasts. Then a big unit of tallymen with uh, one of his harbingers in there. I think it's his BSB. Or no, I think that might be his general. In any case, there's um, there's a big uh harbinger on a palanquin in there. Um, and then in the center, he's got what he calls his lobster ladies. It's a big unit of sirens with two harbingers in there. So lots of different magic. Um, lots of different units, obviously. On my side, I've got my Bruiser Dry on the left. I have a Kin Eater that I deployed normally and moved up into the woods. I've got a big unit of Bruisers in the field with both my characters in there, and I opted for Pyromancy this game to try to whittle down his units because I really don't want to face them at full strength. They'll rip me apart. Um, got my Trappers that have trapped the field as well, up scouting a Vanguarding ahead. Got my Rock a Rock, Brucey, both Scratapults dead center to support. And then on the other side, I have my Merc Vets, and across from them, um, in that mushroom forest, uh, he unfortunately left his model at home, but he's proxying uh, his, uh, in what is it called? Demon Engine. Demon Engine. Um, and then on the other side in the forest, I have another Bruiser Dart. I have my second King Eater and my Trappers up ahead, and then he has his mounted Sirens um, on the hill. Uh, in this game, I don't remember exactly what the deployment scenario were, but spoiler alert, it's really not going to matter. Um, I think I took first turn. I'm going into Magic. I do Scorching Salvo. I'm just trying to pick away at things. I really want to whittle down the Igniters because that... Is his scariest shooting unit, and I also want to I want the Scratapults to start whittling down that Siren unit because that Siren unit is bad bad news. Um, I just I just need to use my ranged advantage as much as possible before I get into him. So this is me just picking things off little by little. Um, let's see, I do a Pyroclastic Flow. I pick off some Lobster Ladies. Um, and then this is his his turn. I had moved up the trappers um, to not only try to bait these guys and uh, trap them up a little bit, but to also throw things at them, try to see if I get lucky, kill one. Uh, and I looks like I do kill one because they were seven strong, I think, at the beginning. So he's charging in there, going to take them out. Uh, my bait successfully works over here. He goes into my kin eater with the plaguelings. Yeah, they have poison, but I have five up regen. Um, I think I can actually win this fight, so I want him to do this. And plus, I have the bruisers nearby to come in, um, because they're just a pain in the ass otherwise. <clears throat> in his magic phase, he does a bubble scrying, uh, which is very annoying, because obviously it affects my ranged ability. And then in combat, uh, <laughs> the plaguelings surprise me. Um, they don't get, I don't think, any poisons or... None that go through that go through, but he rolled a lot of sixes to wound and just killed me outright, which was terrible. And the bruisers panic 
but in this picture they're still on the board just barely um, so really unexpected not so unexpected though uh, the uh, mounted sirens kill the trappers on my turn I think is this me countercharging? This might be. I think this is me countercharging the mounted sirens with the canier. My bruisers failed to rally, run off the board. So those plaguelings just got two units, which is amazing. And now my whole left flank is being dominated by them. <laughs> oh, can't make this stuff up. Um, and then this is just my army advancing. Um, again, just trying to whittle them down as much as possible and then uh, give favorable charges. Um, my bruiser darts move up conservatively to help out the kin eater if need be. Um, but I also don't want to give him uh, a free unit. Uh, in magic phase, I put flaming swords onto my merc vets to help their, their shooting out a bit. And then I do a pyroclastic flow. Again, just keep picking off guys, um, my stratapults start hitting and peeling off more and more of those sirens. You can see that um, he's got some empty space in the back of that movement tray. And I think in magic or shooting I kill off one of these ladies. And uh, maybe I pick off another wound over here. I think that's what that's showing. Not sure what this picture is showing. Okay. But anyway, in his then it's his turn in his magic phase, he gets off another bubble scrying. He's really trying to protect his units. Um, unfortunately, he can get the spell off because the other spell he has is the hereditary, where he boosts the ward save of his units, which is in some ways worse. So uh, I think I have to let scrying go off once or twice this game. Um, he charges in here. He does a couple wounds to me. I totally whiff, uh, don't do anything to him, so that is unfortunate. Um, and this is just showing, I moved my trappers up to, to chaff his two units, um, so that my lines can advance. Um, and it looked like he moved up his demon engine a little too far, my merc vets charge it, gladly, um, it was like an average-ish charge, and I, and I went for it. So that should be bad news for him. Uh, Scorching Salvo again. Just trying to pick off stuff. I put Flaming Swords on the one Scratapult. It ends up missing anyway, so it didn't matter. Um, trappers are throwing stuff. You can see I picked off one Pestilence Beast between Magic and Shooting now, which is nice. This is not so nice. He kills my Kin Eater. Um... I really underestimated how good this unit is. It's not your typical piece of light cavalry, just pure chaff redirector unit. Uh, this this unit can really fight. They have a lot of attacks. They hit easily. They have like plus one to wound. They have armor piercing two or three. It's, it's really nasty. Um, and then obviously in the center, I, I destroyed the demon engine. Um, I've just got so many high strength poison attacks. Um, the issue though... After seeing how well those mounted sirens do, I can't face the Merc Vets to the flank of his lines like I would like to. Because I think if they charge me in the rear, I lose that fight and I, and I lose the unit. Um, my only... The only risk I could take in doing that is that I would be steadfast, likely. Uh, unless he does nine wounds to me. But then it's a one-time uh, roll on a leadership eight, and I'm losing... A lot of wounds for no reason so as much as I hate to do it I have to face forward like this and um, he can then just run around me if he wants um, but at that point all I can do is then hope to shoot him uh, so begrudgingly I turn them around but to my shock he decides to charge into the Merc Vets, which was a very very bad move on his part I think he <laughs> I think he um, really overestimated how well these ladies would do. And I, I stand and shoot. I kill one off. Um, so he goes in. Fair enough. He's going to charge the chaff with his tallyman, clear them out. 
and he charges the flank of the bruisers. So, again, I think this is just an issue of overconfidence. I think he believes that the, the Plaguelings will hold up the bruisers, and I can't say blame him after the, uh, the success he's seen with them, but I don't think they're going to keep overperforming. I think that uh, even with a flank charge that the bruisers will, will win that out quite easily. Um, not sure what this is showing, but you can see that I've taken out some of his igniters. Uh, he gets scrying off on the, the mounted sirens to try and help them out. Big magic face room. He also gets magical nourishment, um, which increases the ward save on his sirens. Uh, but yeah. Even with the spell up, the Merc Vets tear apart that mounted unit, and at just about full strength, I am now, I pivot, and I face the flank of his entire army with my deadliest unit. Um, very bad. Uh, he clears the chaff, obviously, and the bruisers do crush the plaguelings, so they were not heroes once again. Um... Oh, it looks like the igniters just moved up to get into the flank of everything and shoot some stuff. So, you can tell from this picture that uh, this is probably going to be the beginning of the end. Um, I charge everything. The rock rock trips over himself and fails, but everything else makes it. Uh, so, the Merc Vets in the flank of now the depleted Sirens unit should be enough to pop it. Um, and I'm hoping they overrun into the Tallyman. Um, if they do, I think the Tallymen are toast as well, and then they can just go down the line, as you can see. And um, I have no problem with the Bruisers and the Pestilence Beasts. I have the Flaming Banner, so they won't get the regen saved, and I have a lot of high strength attacks coming. Magic, I get Children of Umi off onto the Bruiser unit, just to make extra sure. Minus one to wound. Um, and yeah, and the Merc Vets absolutely go to town on the the uh, sirens I do he does a couple wounds to me and peels off one merc vet but otherwise they pop I overrun but I fail by one inch to make it into the tallyman so I couldn't quite get them to sweep down the entire line but still they're in a really good spot there um, and two of his harbingers are dead the chariots go in and do quite well with the impact hits and their attacks uh, the Tallymen fight back and are able to kill off one, especially with the Harbinger on the one side fighting, but uh, I still win combat. The Chariot holds them up, which is fine. And yeah, the Bruisers absolutely beat up on the Pestilence Beasts, crush them, and then they turn to face the Igniters. Um, I'm not really worried about the Tallymen. Uh, the Merc Vets are there, and the Rock Rock is there just in case. Um, in his magic phase, he's just trying to save the, the Tallymen as best as possible. It gives them rerolls to hit, I believe. Um, he, with the, the light troops, is able to move the igniters out of the way. Um, it's just going to try to do his best to shoot stuff. Uh, he does kill the chariot, which unfortunately is bad for him because now it unchaffs the rock rock. He throws off his shots, though, at the Merc Vets and nearly kills them. Um, he kills a couple. Uh, I don't I don't fail my panic check, though, luckily. So they are still there. Uh, but unfortunately, now on my turn, um, I'm going to have some charges. So <clears throat> the Rock Rock goes in. Uh, I don't think I even bothered to send my Merc Vets in because I don't think I need them, and I don't want to risk losing bleeding points because they're... There's only two of them now. I think I'm just going to resign to magic and shoot the igniters to finish them off. Um, the bruisers just face. Magic, I get flaming swords off on the rock rock. Um, just to bypass its regen. I get children of Umi as well. And yeah, the Brucey eats them up. Um, and then overruns into the igniters. And we don't even need to roll the combat. They, they just pop. So... Unfortunately, it ended up being a very lopsided game, um, a relatively short game, and, and a tabling for the demons, but it, it was a fun game, and a great opponent, uh, 
just a couple of charges where I think he overestimated his units against mine and unfortunately just led to everything else and it was just a domino effect. But um, this is a 20 Ogre Khan's win. Um, my MVPs were obviously the Merc Vets. Uh, and I would say for his, his Plaguelings definitely overperformed. Um, they could have been the heroes of the game possibly if they held up that big bruiser block, but just didn't work out for him. Um, so this was a, a great way to end day one. This put me up um, quite significantly. This bumped me all the way up to table eight, I think, which in a 64-man tournament is pretty good. Um, so it sets me up for my game four that if I do well, I can now be at the top tables game five and possibly play to place. So quite a good way, like I said, to end day one. Um, what did we learn today? Uh, when in doubt, shoot it out. You know, disregarding the rhyme, I had the ranged advantage, I believe, and I was patient. Um, I was moving up on him to definitely try to get some charges off, but I, I knew not to underestimate those units. Those units will crush me in combat, and I need to whittle them down first. And I stuck to my game plan. Um, and then as far as just the way that the flanks worked out, um, being able to sweep the flank with my Merc Vets was just absolutely huge. And this is the second game where my Merc Vets really broke the back of, um, the enemy lines. So, uh, yeah, really not much more to say than that. Um, thank you for watching the video. Uh, and listening in. Feel free to comment below, uh, like, subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff, and uh, I'll update you on what happens in uh, day two. All right, have a good one, guys. Peace.